What's good everyone, welcome to this week's video and this is a super 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 special video because this is episode 5 aka the finale of the Lightroom Master Course. This week we are taking all of our knowledge and we are going to be using that to create presets that can make our photos look like any of these sets. But for anyone new here, my name is Kyler Steele and I'm a photographer and in the past four episodes of this Lightroom course, we have went across all of the panels of Lightroom to become masters of Lightroom and we're tying all that information in today. So if you need any refreshers or if you just on the wrong video, go ahead to episode one and you can learn a lot about Lightroom in just a few hours of your time. That being said, I am going to be creating some short form content because I know this long form content, although this is the best for absorbing and learning new information, it's not everyone's favorite type of content. So subscribe down below if you're interested in some short form tips because they will be coming to the channel as well as a Photoshop tutorial that will also be coming to the channel. And if you don't have access to Lightroom or Photoshop, all of the knowledge that you learn can be applied to any editing app of your choice, so this is valuable information and I recommend sticking around. So it really wasn't until about two years ago that I was truly inspired by the location that I was created in. Up until that point, I had went a few years in photography just being uninspired and not doing any crazy edits. But it was until that I went to these New Jersey beaches that I started seeing the nostalgia and the color of these areas that I was truly inspired to start creating some amazing artwork. So I captured all the locations of these places and decided to start creating presets that I've been working on for multiple years. So if you're interested, these presets will be linked below, available for purchase, and I think there's some amazing presets for you to get. But that being said, I thank you guys for sticking around for this Lightroom Masterclass. It's been so great. I've been in so many different locations filming these episodes as you've seen the, the episodes have been in many different places so if you want to support this channel and this class and you want to see the photoshop stuff then please buy these presets i know you won't be disappointed in these and now let's go on to creating your presets right now all right so hopping into lightroom we're going to check out where our preset tab is if you've been following this course in the past four episodes we've learned all of this right panel over here as well as use this bottom panel to go through photos and check out our film strip but on this left hand side we have the option to pull out and see the preset tab if you downloaded my presets or any other presets you can hit this plus icon hit import presets find the zip file that you have and then you can import this into lightroom this will import those presets and now you see you can add any one of these presets onto your photo. Once you preview these presets you can click on them and Lightroom added an amazing feature which allows you to adjust the amount on these. Usually people don't go above 100 because 100 is usually a pretty strong and anything above that is a lot stronger. But people usually dial it down, it kind of keeps the original photo while blending it in a lot more. So between 70 and 100 on this photo, I think it looks pretty good. I'm just going to leave it around the 100 mark for the sake of this video. And if you wanted to export your presets in order to sell them or give them to friends, you can go in here and hit export group. You can name this whatever you want and then save this to your desktop. But that's all you need to know in where Lightroom presets are and how to buy them and import them and then export them. But how do you create them from scratch? So Lightroom presets are pretty interesting because they take all of these panels over here, even the local adjustments, and you can throw this all into a preset and slap it onto any photo. The problem with this is the more you manipulate one photo, the less likely your preset is going to fit on other photos. So you have to be very delicate when it comes to creating presets because the more of these panels that you edit, the less likely your preset is going to work and look nice on other photos. That being said, the good thing is, if you manipulate things too far and you create a preset, Lightroom does have this amount slider that I showed you before, so you can only throw on a slight preset, and maybe it will work if it wasn't working at 100%. This is good because in the past most people have used presets and not been happy with them and then the person who created the presets usually says that they have to play with some sliders but that defeats the whole purpose of the preset so now that Lightroom has this amount slider it really makes presets basically a one click adjustment. So let's go ahead in here and go through some of these tabs and I'm going to give you some of my recommendations for creating presets and some of my suggestions as well. So we're going to hop into this basic tab and the number one thing I do not want to touch 
is white balance and exposure. These are things that I do think should be set per photo. So I will set this exposure and I think the white balance is perfectly fine. But when it comes to creating the preset, I'm not gonna include these things because exposure is so different for photos, especially if you're exposing for the shadows or exposing for the highlights, that when you are using a preset, I don't like to account for an underexposed or overexposed photo. I think that should be fixed before the preset is applied. But let's just go and fly through these settings. I think contrast is perfectly fine. Highlight, shadows, those are all fine. Whites and blacks, those are all fine to edit. Uh, clarity is usually fine to edit. Texture is fine. Dehaze is fine. Vibrance and saturation, perfectly fine to put onto your presets. Tone curve, as you know with tone curve in the last episode, is something I barely like to touch. If I'm going to touch the tone curve, it's going to be the slightest, slightest things, and I will do that at the end. For HSL, I'm perfectly fine editing HSL, but the most important thing with HSL is that if you are editing a preset to be put on a portrait, you definitely want to have skin tones in your reference photo. Because I could go in here and play with these reds and really draw down these hues and mess with these hues, but that is going to drastically change a person's skin tones. So this preset would not work on a person's skin tones. So that's one thing you gotta know. Edit your preset on a photo that the preset will most likely be used on. So I'm going to go ahead and keep playing around here and kind of get a preset color HSL that I like. I'm just going to go for kind of a similar preset to what I had before. Kind of just playing with these greens and these blues to get a more pleasing color. And so all of this HSL, I'm happy thrown into a preset perfectly fine. Color grading, I love throwing this into a preset. This applies a color grade to the whole photo. Sometimes the blend and the balance might be messed up, but I do like throwing this into a photo. So we're just gonna throw on a cool, let's go with a golden tone vibe for this preset, but we're just gonna go ahead, throw in some golden tones, throw in some greens, really get this photo into a stylized look. Hopping into detail, I usually don't like to mess around too much with this. In terms of the masking, this really depends on each photo, so I wouldn't tune in any sharpening at all. I'd probably just turn this down all the way. And then I wouldn't mess with the noise reduction or the color reduction or the luminance reduction at all. I just don't think it is necessary for a preset. For lens corrections, I might turn them on for the photo, but it's not something I'm going to put in the preset for the same reason. Sometimes the profile corrections can make the photo look really weird. Um, chromatic aberration is perfectly fine, but I just leave it on and toggle it on later in the photo and not put it on right away. Transform, you definitely do not want to put in your preset, especially auto and full and guided. All of these will completely mess up certain photos, so just leave these off and then do those adjustments afterwards. For effects, I'm perfectly fine throwing on a vignette for each photo. It just needs to be known that you don't want to do too much with this. It's kind of like the tone curve, you don't want to do too much. And same with grain. As you can see, I have like a utilities here. This kind of adds certain effects that I don't want to add in a certain preset. But this adds some curves, some grain, some skies, some temperatures. This all depends on the photo and I keep separate from my main presets, but it can all impact the photo. But for the sake of this, I could throw on a little bit of grain, but I'm not sure if I'll put that in the preset once I create it. And then calibration, I also think this is another great area to put in your presets. This is really going to color your photos in certain ways. And that's really what I like from presets. I like applying colors and seeing colors because it really, when I have these multiple presets like the Jersey Shore, Shore Pack, I can scroll through and see, oh, I might want to take the photo in the golden direction. I might want to take the photo in the cool direction. I might want to put a teal and orange look on this photo. So I think really playing around with all of these primaries and then finding out an image that you like is a good way to basically have a starting point. So even if you don't use the preset, you kind of have an understanding of which way you want to take the photo before you even start. So I'm just going to play around with this a little bit and kind of get a photo in the way that I like it. We're going to go ahead with our theme here and kind of go for this greenish yellow tones on this photo. And that basically covers everything that we have here. And then like I said, you can add these adjustments to your preset, but it's not something I want to do. And then if we want to go ahead and create our preset, we can go ahead and hit this plus icon and you can see we had that import option that we learned about before, or we can hit this create option. Now this is basically going to let us 
create our preset. And here you could see everything that I have checked is usually how I create my presets. I have white balance and exposure are not checked because I want to check those after. Same with treatment profile. I don't want to do that. No auto set ins. I do want to do all those contrasts and all these basic adjustments because that drastically affects the color and the look of the photo. Tone curve is fine, but we didn't put it in this photo. I, I kind of forgot to do that, but we can add slight fades into the tone curve. HSL, we did want to put into the preset. For color grading, we wanted to put in the preset. For all this detail, we did not want to put that in the preset, so we could check that off. We could put chromatic aberration if we wanted in there, but we'll just leave that off for now. And we don't want any transform. We could put the effects. I will put the effects for this preset, but usually I do leave those off. In my preset pack, I leave those off because I don't want to add grain on every photo. And then we leave calibration on for the colors. Now, we definitely want to have this support amount slider. That is very good. That is the new thing. We definitely love that. And then we're going to go ahead. I'm just going to name this test preset and then you could put this in any group you can create a new group to create your preset pack and I usually had a test presets folder for test presets before I put them in my final pack so I think this is exactly what I used and then we're gonna go ahead and hit create and this created our preset in this test preset folder that we could see now and I'm gonna go ahead and try to slap this on another photo and we'll see how it came out this is kind of similar to the other photo, but let's see how it looks. All right, it actually doesn't look too terrible. We could see if I pull this up, I could really go for like a nostalgia look on this house. Or if I pull this down, it's a little more subtle. And then you could see we created a really stylized preset and using this amount slider, we can basically have multiple looks from one preset here. And then going back into my other presets, I'll show you guys how my other presets look on this file. So you can see basically all the options. When I'm looking at this house photo, I can see that there's so many different ways that I can take this photo. And I think that's the glory of presets is you kind of get a different perspective on editing when you have a file like this and you have presets like this. You might want to take it in a certain color range. So even if I don't use this preset or I use this preset as a base, I can really start to take it in different directions and then finalize the look that I want. But presets are really good because they allow you to get a certain stylized look on your page. I've been editing very green looking photos on my Instagram and for that I usually use my Wildwood preset. This really takes out the greens inside my file and it looks very nice. And then I usually just take it into Photoshop, clean it up, add some sepia tone in, which really emphasizes the greens in the photo. So a lot of my photos I edit are actually using my own presets because they just work for photos and they help me out a ton, especially when I'm shooting 500 photos or more a day. But yeah, we'll go back to our test preset here. I don't hate it. I might even keep it because it's something different. As you can see, it doesn't have a look compared to anything else that I have. So it's just cool to constantly be creating presets, especially if we edit one photo that we really like. And even if we don't think we're ever gonna use that preset because the settings were just so wonky for that photo, just create a preset because you'll have a reference for one day. Like if you take the photo out of Lightroom or you import another photo that's similar, you have a reference to see, can I edit the photo the same way? Will it give a similar look? And at the end of the day, it's gonna make you a better editor. You're gonna learn what goes wrong in photos, what makes photos fall apart, what keeps photos together, what impacts the photo the most. I just think presets are a great way to learn. I know I downloaded a bunch of presets when I was starting and just looked at the tone curves, looked at the HSLs. How far did the people that created these presets pull the sliders? Did they pull them to 100? Did they pull them to 80? And it really helped me learn and see what other people were using to edit. And I can't thank presets enough for that. They definitely get a bad rap. And I think a lot of people either make them way too stylized and they don't look good or they make them way too basic and then they're not worth the money. I like to think that my presets are a happy medium. There's a bunch of different colors and tones in there. So if you're interested in picking those up, like I said, they are linked down below. I sincerely hope that you guys enjoyed the series. If you could leave a comment and let me know what your favorite episode or your favorite tip was. I'm gonna have tons more editing videos for you guys. I'm just getting started. I'm so happy that all you guys are here and learning together tag me on Twitter, tag me on Instagram, send me your presets to try out. 
do whatever you want. I love to see what my work is doing to impact you guys. So that's all for the series. There will be future editing tutorials to come, and I hope I see many of your faces over there. So I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.